just remember to turn the switch on when you put it in place. Alright, now arrange for... a couple or three more stacks of 25. Which will become easier as the space in the inventory clears out. I need that for navigation. Okay, let's see. Okay, there's four stacks of 25. I won't have to do this again for a little while. And we're off again. Another advantage of the switches over redstone torches is that on a long track, sometimes you have a need to stop along the way. And it's so much easier if you can just turn off the switch that's powering that rail, and that makes that location a stop. And then when you're done, you just turn it back on. Okay going to need more cobblestone down here and I think it's time to raise the track bed up a little ways. And for that matter it also needs to turn that way for a while. So I'm going to raise it up about 10 blocks and then turn left. Or turn right, excuse me. I seem to have lost count there, so... Alright. Alright, that's eight, so raise it up two more. out one or two and make my turn. Alright. Of course, the incline is going to eat powered rail a lot faster because there, there needs to be powered rail every other track piece. I know I'm not saying much here, but uh, when doing this sort of thing, I'm always hyper aware of just how easy it is to fall off of this. And while that isn't necessarily fatal, 
it's really bad on the nerves. One thing I've noticed is switch orientation. That it almost seems to be random when you put down a switch how it's going to orient because these switches are all put down in the same way and yet they're not all facing the same way. I wonder why that is. Okay, and now we can go back to one every 25, which I need to arrange a few stacks of 25. It's a little bit cumbersome to do, I realize, but it's worth doing because it makes putting the track actually down, actually putting the track down so much easier. And this way, I don't have to try to count as I'm putting it down and so on. That allows me to stay much more focused on not falling off. And of course, doing things this way, once I run out of materials, all I have to do is toss that minecart on there, give it a shove, jump into it, and ride it all the way back. Ah. This is why I'm glad I brought the shears. And the axe, too, for that matter. I've seen I've seen things spawning on treetops and such like and for that reason I'd kind of like to make it as difficult as possible for anything in a tree to get onto the track All right Let's throw a torch down here just for sheer visibility Figure I can stack some leaves to get back up there. And then shear them off when I'm done. Or even use leaves to get back up out of this pit that I jumped into. And use the axe here and cut some of this wood. I'm going to need more of it anyway. Okay. Apparently I failed at hitting record a minute ago and at 
this instant I'm not exactly sure how much, sure how much was lost, but basically at the rail this far, cut through a couple of trees, and I have decided to raise the track up. I think it's about eight or nine more blocks above what it was, so that I don't have to cut through quite so many trees. There's still some that are going to need to be cut, but not nearly as many as down on the ground level. And now I've decided what I'm going to go ahead and do is just lay down all of the cobblestone on the track bed as that I have. And then I will come back and deal with rails after that. And so we're off. Okay. The shears are dead, so we'll do this the old fashioned way. Oh boy, I'll tell you what, I did not do that. I was doing my thing, holding shift, gradually stepping forward a little bit at a time, when all of a sudden, forward motion didn't want to stop. I'm going to make use of these leaves to get back up there. Hopefully I can get back up there and off of them before they start to decay. about that. Now I'm on cobblestone. I feel better. Let's do something about this. All right. Something I like about the idea of the leaves, it just occurred to me when I just did that now, the leaves make a very nice self-destroying temporary pillar. You just get up to where you're going and get off of them before they start to decay. And then once they decay, you don't have any unsightly pillar hanging around. For people to look at and say, gee, can't you find a better way to do things? Okay, I got away with falling off of this thing once. I don't want to push it and see if I can get away with it again. I've had that control sticky problem before and it's most unnerving when it happens. There's been three or four times that it's run me right into a pool of lava. I don't know why that happens. I don't think it's my computer because I've never seen it happen in any other application at all. It could be something to do with Java. It could be something to do with Minecraft itself. I don't know. Tell me, have you had that kind of problem happen at all, ever? I'd like to know.
I think I'll finish this stack and turn back to a straight towards home direction. Compass is getting to where it's just about almost a 90 degree turn. Okay. Yeah. That's got, uh, that's moved to a much better straight on course now. Probably have to have another turn along the way, but that's alright. We'll get to that. Do that when we get to it. See, the recording stopped because Bandicam only lets me record 10 minutes at a time. And so I had to stop what I was doing and then stop and restart the recording. And coming back, I misclicked. I don't think we need any cobblestone over there. And just think, if I hadn't raised the altitude of the track, then I would be having to do this every 10 or 20 blocks. <laughs> <laughs> 